We are here at the Confederation College <clears throat> with uh, Rudy Turtle, Chief Rudy Turtle from Grassy Narrows. You're running for NDP. Mm -hmm. I'm running for NDP because uh, uh, the Liberals haven't they failed to deliver on their promise, I believe. I know they tried, but it's not good enough. Um, there's still outstanding issues that need to be addressed, especially with the water, water crisis in our First Nation communities. Um, there's several reserves that need water, um, clean water, and, and that includes my community of Grassy Narrows. Our mercury treatment center needs to be built and, and basically these things are for our people. There's several reserves that need water, uh, clean water, and, and that includes my community of Grassy Narrows. Our mercury treatment center needs to be built and, and, and basically these things are for our people. Do you see the progress happening? I know that the money is still there. Well, they, they, they're saying it's there, but it's not um, like we would prefer uh, the money being put in a trust so that it's guaranteed and it won't get disrupt, disrupted no matter who who's in government. But uh, the Liberals refuse to do that. They, they just want to do a standard contribution agreement, which you do every year, and, and those things are not secure because they can be changed or put to a stop anytime money is secured no matter what government is in place oh no that's not that's not true that's what they're telling us but on paper what they've written on paper it doesn't doesn't say that with you running and i know that it's not only grassy narrows with the boil water advisory mm -hmm. and the, i think there's like 87 other communities mm -hmm. as well right yeah yes definitely well with me running and I'm being positive here, like after I win. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay. Yeah. When I win, like I, I would like to keep this in the forefront, like just keep, you know, make sure the minister, whoever is going to be the next minister, or if it's the same one, that to, to keep this at his table or in his face, so to speak, like just keep it. So he doesn't forget it and just keep reminding him that hey, there's still these communities that need good water and there's still projects that need to be completed. So that's what I would like to do. And the other thing that I'm interested in is to make sure that the Declaration on Indigenous Rights is put back on, on the table or, you know, put back to try to push it into law. I know they, they couldn't do it this time around, but hopefully we we'll start the process again. Um, with that being said, like um, I'm sure there's other interests also is that serious issues um, mm -hmm. <coughs> that, that, like foster care, uh, mm -hmm. child welfare, mm -hmm. um, health. Yeah, definitely like child, wolf, child welfare is important and it's important that it comes under uh, uh, indigenous control. Like I believe that we should be, that native people should be running their own family services according to their own laws and uh, according to how, because the thing too about indigenous communities is each community is unique. They do things in their own way. Like uh, people seem to think that there's just one standard for all native communities. It doesn't work like that. We're all different. We speak different languages. And, and, and so I believe that if we had uh, child welfare un under our control, then we could do it our way. For example, we could do it grassy in our way, right? Because we've been handling our family affairs our way all, all, all these years or through the centuries. And, and to have that flexibility for each community to to uh, handle their family crisis in their own way is, is much better than just having some uh, government agency telling you oh, this is the way you got to do it.
because with indigenous people, family is the the, the root. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. And getting that back mm-hmm. with the Transparency mm-hmm. Act. How yeah. do you feel about that? Uh, well, I, I I think it's important. I think that that people need to be accountable and 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 of course you're serving the people and, and it's important that people know what you do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think that First, First Nations um, today has you see the assimilation, you see mm-hmm. the purpose of why the India Act, the Indian Act was mm-hmm. um, devised. Mm-hmm. Now why now you see the lateral violence of the residential school mm-hmm. and, and the fear and the pain is up front mm-hmm. and has divided the people. Do you feel, how do you feel that we could work to get that better? Like improvements? I think that, you know, there has to be good, good solid programs and there has to be, uh, like I said, that each community is unique and that the local people need to make a plan that will work for their community members and whether if it's cultural or whether it's because you have to realize that that some communities especially like some northern communities is the uh, they have strong christian and they, very strong Christian people and so whatever path they're using for their healing you have to respect that and and come up with a plan to for their own journey I guess. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well right on I hope yeah. you do win mm-hmm. and yeah. it does sound positive. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else that you would like to share? Well, I just uh, encourage uh, people to come out and vote especially our native uh, communities and uh, that's one of the one of the struggles, people feel that, you know, this is a federal election and what difference is, is it going to make, they say, but it, it makes a big difference. Every, every vote counts and, and, I, and I just encourage people to come out and vote. Uh-huh. Do me good. Yeah. This is Nia Choi Kamogunish Nabinikas with Net News Leisure here at the Confederation College.